welcome all of you to this teaching session of today. We have been teaching on the theme, the love of God, uh, fr uh, from the beginning of this month. The first Sunday of this month of April, we were looking at uh, the love of God from the point of Easter, because indeed, Easter is the greatest demonstration of the love of God. As the Bible says in John chapter 3, verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, I add Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So God demonstrated his love. So we move from there to the second Sunday, which was just last uh, Sunday, where we now began to look at the introduction to this topic, the love of God. So we are continuing today in that. We've already read our text, which is Romans chapter 5, verse 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 5. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Praise the name of the Lord. We want to continue by again um, rehashing the model that we have been sharing on this platform. The BRRBL model. It is a very specific message the Almighty God gave to us to share. So steps for greater victory and eternal life. Uh, if you've also looked at uh, the book that I, God helped me to put together, Who is a Christian? The Pathway to Eternal Life. On page eight, you will see this model. So you must uh, be very familiar with this model because it will help you and make very simple your life as a Christian, your life in Christ Jesus, because that's what simply it means to be a Christian. So the BRR model, BRRBL model provides short steps for greater victory and the pathway to eternal life. Our focus must be to work closely with the Holy Spirit, our divine helper. BRRBL stands for believe, repent, receive, become, live. I touched on this uh, last Sunday. Um, so, and we have treated this whole spectrum. We are now looking at L, which is living by faith and love as you abide in Christ always. Living by faith. In love. So as a Christian, you must live by faith and love as you abide in Christ always, keeping hope alive. As you would see in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, there the Bible says, now remains these three, hope, faith, and love. And the greatest of it all, of the three, is love. So we must live by faith and love as we continue to abide in Christ, keeping hope, the hope of eternal life that has been given to us through Jesus Christ continually. Praise the name of the Lord. So we looked at faith up all through last month, and we are now looking at love. And we will continue to look deeper every Sunday at the love of God. So if you can grasp this model, believe, repent, receive, become, and leave, you will have assurance and victory in this life. Assurance of eternal life and victory, daily victory in life. And now, this is a very simple model that you must also grasp. 
that everything you do in life must have a foundation, a foundation. If you want to be strong, rooted in life, you must have foundation. You must understand the foundation that you stand upon. And so when we were treating faith, how to exercise faith, you remember? Again, we clearly discussed the foundation of faith and then how to exercise faith. And that will take us to the mountains of victory, which I believe by now you are conquering your mountains of victory every day. Glory be to God. In the same way, we are going to look at love, victory by love, living in love. That's how I have couched this deep focus section. And now you understand the foundation of love is built on that same model, B-R-R-B-L. And then the L is living by faith and love. We are now focusing on the love aspect. So we're going to look at living in love in three parts. Understand God's love. Understand the spirit's fruit of love in you, as we dealt with in the introduction last week. And as the text also says very clearly, now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. If you have the Holy Spirit of God, I say it again boldly and clearly, you already have the capacity to love as God loves. The problem is many of us have not come to this consciousness of number one, that we have the Holy Spirit, and number two, that we have that spirit capacity, potential, capability to love as God's love. We limit ourselves, and hence we limit the life that we live. When we are able to combine these two, which is the foundation of love, which is Christ Jesus himself, having come through that foundation, believing, repenting, receiving the Holy Spirit, and believing God that he has given us the Holy Spirit and living by faith and love. Having to have that foundation, we can then combine with living daily in love, and we will experience the highest level and, and experience of God. So if you're desiring to have the highest level and experience of God, then it is love. Hallelujah. The greatest victory and eternal life is guaranteed when we live in love. And we define love. Love is the state of being or of mind or disposition to do only good to another person and no harm and consideration of gain stemming from the indwelling spirit of God. I'll take that again so it will sink in. Love is a state of being or of mind or disposition to do only good to another person and no harm and consideration of gain, stemming from the indwelling spirit of God. So you can only really practice the love of God by the help of the Holy Spirit who dwells in us, who has been given to us because we have come to believe God through his son, Jesus Christ, and thereby God has given us his Holy Spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. We're going to look at a number of scriptures, but let me quickly jump to 1 John. You remember chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. Specifically verse 8, it says, God is love. God is love, and he that loves is born of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Do you desire to have the highest level and experience of God, brothers and sisters, then come up hither, come to living in love. For love is the fulfillment of the law. Praise the name of the Lord. 
With this model clear to us, let us delve into the scriptures and look at a bit deeper at the foundation of love, specifically understanding God's love and the spirit's fruit of love that has been given to you and me. I will stop sharing at this point and we look into the scriptures. Praise the name of the Lord. Let us look at Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13, let's read from verse 8. Romans chapter 13, verse 8. Oh, no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. Praise the name of the Lord. Can you see that? So love is perfection. Hallelujah. I believe we will go from this to see um, the concept that I believe by the Spirit of God. Uh, God again has helped me to put together around the hierarchy of life. The hierarchy of life. If you are uh, inclined with the social model of Maslow, Maslow hierarchy of needs, you will see how selfish humanity can be, human beings. Because God has created man to live in love, and yet man is extremely selfish and will do everything selfish rather than live in love. As you would see that the whole Maslow's theory is all focused on self, self, self. And thereby, the only point that they talk about another person is self-actualization. But even that self-actualization is perceived from the point of self and therefore not embracing the full scope of what that self-actualization is meant to do. So Romans chapter 13, verse 8. Open your Bible and read it with me. Is it in your Bible? Because we're going to look at it up to verse 10, which is where the definition of love is embedded in the Bible. Glory be to God. I'm sure you'll be excited to discover this. So that definition that I gave to us is embedded in Romans chapter 13, verse 10. But you need to read it all the way from verse 8 to 10. Let's read it again from verse 8. Oh, no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. Verse 9. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not be a false witness, you shall not covert, and if there is any other commandment, are uh, all summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law is summed up in this one commandment. You shall love your neighbor. I shall love my neighbor as myself, as yourself. Look at verse 10 and read it with me. Love does not harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Love does no harm. Love does no harm to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. So you can see where my definition of love, when you compare it to other uh, definitions and description of love, is coming from. Is the combination of Romans chapter 5, verse 5, Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, and Romans chapter 13, verse 10 which says love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. 
Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, what does it say? The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, and it continues. Romans chapter 5, verse 5, what does it say? It says, now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So love is the state of being. It is a state of being. You can become love for God is love. First John chapter 3 verse 8. Love is a state of being or of mind or disposition to do only good to another person and no harm and no consideration of gain. Stemming from, that is coming from the indwelling spirit of God. Without the spirit of God, man naturally tends towards selfishness, self, rather than love. Which is why Maslow theory is all about self. If you know the hierarchy, let me just give, give it to us, but we're going to deal with it in the next teaching. The hierarchy of uh, needs that Maslow propounded. He says the lowest hierarchy is physiological needs. That is physical needs. And then you, that you move from there to self, safety and security. Say safety and security needs. And then you move from there to belonging needs, social needs. It will amaze you that that is where they put love. Because that is self-love, not love for another person, not the love of God. It is self-love. And then Maslow says you go from there to self-esteem. So you can see in selfishness, self-esteem is rated higher than love. Because it's all about self-love, not the love of God. And then you move from there to self-actualization. It is all self, 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 self. Self into five is all selfishness. And that's why there is so much bitterness, hatred, pain in the world. Because all that human beings are seeking for is self, selfishness, seeking for your own self. The only thing God says you should seek for your own self, in the same gravity as you seek for your neighbor, is love. Praise the name of the Lord. Love. So, Let's go to see what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ then has taught us about this great subject of law. Let's look at some teaching. We started last week at Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. And you remember the story from verse 25. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Verse 26, he said to him, what is written in the law? What is your reading of it? So he answered and said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. So this is the only place in law. It is in law. God says, you love your neighbor as yourself. So number one, you must love yourself. <laughs> you know, sometimes many of us assume that we love ourselves. We think selfishness is love for ourselves. No, selfishness is not the same thing as love for yourself. Selfishness is just selfishness. Let me prove it to us. A man as selfish as it is will take his hand. Even health uh, ministries say that smoking is dangerous to your health. That's how they caption it, isn't it? The same man that says, I love myself, will take his hand 
take those that smoke and uh, pump it down and say, whatever happens. Some people will say something must kill a man. No, no, no. It's not something must kill a man. You have simply lost the power to, resi to resist that addiction. I can go on and count and count. Oh, drug addicts will tell you they can't help themselves. They have been taken over by the power of addiction. And let me tell you, there is a demon behind every addiction, whether you want to believe it or not. There is a, a demon. Whether you are addicted to sex, addicted to drugs, addicted to anything, you, there is a demon behind every form of addiction. And if you will come to Jesus, he will cast that demon out of you instantly. And so if you're connected upon this platform and you have heard the word that I have just spoken now, and you are addicted to anything, just raise your hand wherever you are. I want to cast out that demon of addiction right now. And it will leave you because God has given me the authority in the name of Jesus to cast out devils. In the name of Jesus Christ, you spirit of addiction in that man's life, in that woman's life, you spirit of lust, fornication and adultery, addiction to alcohol, drugs, I cast you out right now in the name of Jesus. Leave that man in the name of Jesus. He is a creation of God Almighty. And Jesus has died for his sins. So you have no right. You have no power. And it is written, I shall trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all power of the enemies. In the name of Jesus, I shall cast out them. So I cast out every spirit of addiction, afflicting that man, afflicting that woman, whatever affliction it is. Jesus set you free now. Be free in the name of Jesus. It is written, whomsoever the Son of God shall set free is free indeed. Be free in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to thank God. Tell him, Lord Jesus, thank you for setting me free as we continue in, in this teaching. So when this man answered in verse 28, Jesus said to the lawyer, and he said to him, you have answered rightly. Do this and you will live. Do this and you will do what? Live. You will have eternal life. Hallelujah. The same thing that uh, Romans chapter 13, verses 8 through 10 that we read, spoke about. It says, love your neighbor as yourself. So you have to love yourself and be able to love your neighbor. Another demonstration of how we hate ourselves and think that we love ourselves because we are selfish is in this very simple provision of God. God said, I have given my son, Jesus Christ, to die for the sin of man because I love you. And this is, it is no pain to you. It is nothing but just out of selfishness. Some are busy trying to prove that there is no God. And yet they have not, they did not create themselves. That still doesn't speak to them. Some are trying to prove that Jesus Christ did not die in the flesh for mankind. Now ask them a very simple question. When you prove this, what will it do for you? Absolutely nothing. On the other hand, if you believe that Jesus Christ died in the flesh for you and me, and you will receive the spirit, because once you receive the spirit, there is no doubt at all. Romans chapter 8, verse 15, the Bible says that the spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the sons and daughters of God. Emphasis are mine. So, when you receive Jesus Christ, you have eternal life. I always make bold to say eternal life is given to you while you are here on planet Earth. It is not when you die. When you die, it is finished. You face judgment of God. The provision of eternal life is while you are here on planet Earth. So receive Jesus and receive eternal life. And now live in this love, the highest form of life. So let's look at this a bit deeper. 
And so Jesus said, you have answered rightly. Do this and you shall live. And the man, wanting to justify himself, to show that he, he knows something, said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? And who is my neighbor? We will come to this. Because as I have said, this is the highest form of life. Love does not fail. And God wants to provoke us by his spirit to live this love that he has called us to live. So let's look at other examples from Jesus before we come to this specific uh, aspect of how we ought to live in love. Let's look at Luke chapter 11, verse 42. Luke 11, this same Luke 11, 42, what Jesus Christ had to say. Because if there is one person who can teach us love of God, it is Jesus Christ. So we're looking at what Jesus says about this love. Look at verse 42. Jesus said, but woe to you Pharisees, for you tight mint and rue and all manner of herbs and pass by justice and the love of God. This you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. Did you see this? In fact, if you look at uh, Matthew portion of it, Matthew 23, 23, he says, you left the weightier matters. You left the weightier matters. So Jesus here said, love again is the thing we ought to pursue, ought to live by. Praise the name of the Lord. In John chapter 5, verse 42. John chapter 5, verse 42. Let's see what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ had to say there again. John chapter 5, verse 42. Oh, glory be to God. Again, Jesus here talking to the Jews. He said, but I know but I know you, that you do not have the love of God in you. You do not have the love of God in you. Pay attention to that. He was talking to the Jews, the people that God has chosen, the chosen people of God. Jesus Christ looked them in the eyes and said to them, but I know you that you do not have the love of God in you. That's why I have come to challenge you, my brothers and sisters, that a natural man is selfish. For you to live the love that God expects you to live, you need the Holy Spirit. He's the one who produces the fruit of love. He's the one who gives us the capacity and the capability to live in the love of God. And you can only receive the Holy Spirit if you have come to Jesus Christ. Otherwise, you will just be practicing love by works. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, which we're also going to look at. But let's look at Rome, uh, John chapter 13, verse 35 again. Before we go there, I think there is something interest, interesting here that we should look at. Verse 43 of that John chapter 5, I read verse 42. Verse 43, he said, I have come in my father's name, and you do not receive me. If another comes in his own name, him you will receive. How can you believe who receive honor from one another and do not seek the honor that comes from the only true God, the honor that comes from the only God? Do you see that? That's exactly the point. The world does not have the love of God. The world is all looking for selfishness. So if you are a Christian, you must live in love. Love is not weak. Love is powerful and love is power. There is no power that love cannot overcome. And you shall overcome. And so I called you unto victory by love. 
through living in love, the love of God. Praise the name of the Lord. So we look at John chapter 13, verse 35. John chapter 13, verse 35. So you see what Jesus Christ said. From verse 34, let me read from verse 34. He said, a new commandment, hallelujah. Even the Old Testament commandment that we saw recapped in Luke chapter 10, verse 27, was talking about love. Love for God, love for yourself, and love for humanity as yourself. That's the summary of Luke chapter 10, verse 27. Love God, love yourself, and love humanity as yourself. Now Jesus said, a new commandment I give to you. John chapter 13, I'm reading verses 34 and 35. A new commandment I give to you that you love one another as I have loved you. What is the standard of this love? It says we should love one another the same way Jesus loves us. This is where this love is different. Hallelujah. The love of God. We know that it is higher than the highest mountains. It's bigger than the biggest. It's greater than the greatest. It's deeper than the deepest depth that we could ever imagine. It's wider than the... Why this? Whatever you can imagine. Yet, Jesus said that is how we are to love. How do we love? We are to love one another as I, Jesus, have loved you. That you also love one another. Glory be to God. Verse 35. It says, by this, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. And more importantly, by this shall all people know that you are a Christian, one that is like Christ, just like Christ, if you have love like Jesus has for you for one another, for your spouse, for your children, for your brothers and sisters, for your neighbors. No difference. This is the love of God. Glory be to God. Praise the name of the Lord. John, the beloved, understood the depth of God's love. And so he gave us lots of teaching on God's love. Of course, we've read from the book of John, the teaching of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on love. But let's look at 1 John chapter 3. 1 John, 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. So we'll see. He said, Beloved. Oh, behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Glory be to God. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Just as Jesus is pure. We purify ourselves by love. Glory be to God. Beloved, I want to wrap up here by looking at the characteristics of love. Now you have the full definition of love. 
that love is a state of being. You can become love. You can come to that state of being where your total life is subsumed, consumed in love as God is love. Love is the state of being or of mind or disposition to do only good to another person and no harm and no consideration of gain. Coming from the indwelling spirit of God, it implies first our total submission, obedience, and adoration of God, and then expressing God in us to others in love. Quickly, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 teaches us the characteristics of love. If you look from verses 4 to 8, which we looked at uh, briefly last Sunday. So verse 4, love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Is not puffed up does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, does not seek its own, is not selfish, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, love never fails. These are the characteristics of love. I want you to add to that, that love is giving. Love is giving. Also add to that, that love is obedience. Love is obedience. Jesus Christ taught us this, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ taught us this in John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Let's look at that. Verses 23 and 24. He says, Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my father will love him. And we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the father's who sent me. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And my father will love him. And we will come to him and make our home with him. So what draws Jesus and the father to make home in us? The living temple of God is loving God. And how do we demonstrate our love to God? By obedience. There is no love when there is disobedience. There is no love when there is disobedience. When you see your children tell you, ah, mommy, I love you, yet they don't obey you, know that their heart is far away from you. Love is demonstrated in obedience. Jesus taught us here, say, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. This is the highest form of life. You want to live and become love so that the full expression of God will manifest through you. You want to see God manifest in you and manifest through you? Then come to the realm of love. We're going to look deeper into this realm. Uh, I'm going to share with us the hierarchy of life with love, which is God himself, being the greatest, as the scripture supports and teaches us. And so that Jesus taught us this secret here, this key that is often overlooked, that if you want God to have full expression in you, in me, if we want God 
to fully manifest in us. What is the key? Love. Jesus answered and said to him, if anyone loves me, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and my father will love him and we, Jesus and his father will come to him and make our home. We will come and live with him. 24, he who does not love me does not keep my words. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. This is where we will draw the curtain for today. Do you love God? Do you, by that love of God, love yourself? And the greatest love you can demonstrate to yourself is to accept the gift of eternal life. Whether you believe there is hellfire or not is immaterial, but at least by the sense of justice, you should believe that there will be condemnation of human beings and there will also be salvation, redemption of human beings because there must be accountability even in life that we live here. So do you love yourself enough to accept God's gift of eternal life? Who is Jesus Christ? And Jesus here said, if you love me, you will keep my word. In John chapter 3, verse 16, that we started with, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. John chapter 1, verse 12 and 13. The Bible says, as many as received him to them, he gave the power to become the children of God. Let us pray. Would you accept Jesus? Would you surrender your life to him? So God will give you his Holy Spirit and let this highest form of love begin to manifest in your life. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want you to pray with me. Tell him and say, Almighty God, thank you for your word. Now, Holy Spirit, Pour out the love of God in my heart and help me to love as God loves, as Jesus loves. Help me to love the true love of God and let that love manifest in my life. And for you who wants to surrender your life to Jesus now, go ahead and tell him, Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Forgive me all my sins, almighty God. I repent of my sins today, and I give my life to Jesus. Say, Father, please give me your Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Say, Holy Spirit of God, I yield myself to you. Pour out the love of God in me, in my heart, and help me to love God, to love myself, and to love my neighbor, humanity, as God loves, as Jesus loves. Glory be to God. Heavenly Father, we thank you for how you've taught us today. We thank you for how you brought us to the end of this teaching session. Lord, we ask by your spirit help us that this word will transform our lives. Let the power of your love live in us, manifest in us, and let us have that victory in all areas of life by the power of your love. Thank you, our Lord and our God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray, Lord, for all these, your children, that as we go out there showing your love all over the world, that the impact of your love will affect the whole world. We pray also that by your spirit, 
you will cause your fire of love to be ignited over selfishness in all nations of the earth. Thank you, our Lord and our God. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. The Almighty God bless you, brothers and sisters. Bye-bye and have a lovely week filled with the love and peace and joy and glory of God. God bless you. Bye-bye.